Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Weather in five, five days and five minutes as September ends and October begins on Tuesday. We've got uh, a lot of things going on this week. This is going to be a volatile week uh, with uh, temperatures eventually reaching their peaks on Wednesday, where we could see many areas get close to the 90 degree mark. And then we're going to see a trip downhill as we head into the end of the week and the start of the weekend, where we're going to have uh, some places having a tough time getting out of the 50s for daytime highs. So we're, we're seeing some movement in terms of the overall pattern. Hurricane Lorenzo is driving this, and we're going to talk about that. Download the free weather app. It's been updated on Google Play and on the App Store. Uh, it also lets you keep uh, up to date uh, with all the latest weather posts that I do and, the and, and any changes in, in the weather forecasts. Uh, because you get notifications directly. So uh, be sure you have the updated version of the free app. And if you don't have the free app, go ahead and download it on Google Play or on the App Store, the meteorologist Joe Chaffee weather app. Now, as far as today is concerned, it's, it's a little bit of an odd day because we do have uh, an old frontal boundary that is setting up to our south as a warm front that's going to try to push back up northward. So uh, in areas from, say, northern New Jersey, north and east, we are seeing partly sunny skies, but we also have the onshore flow that's going to keep temperatures today in the 60s. South and west of there gets a little bit warmer, lower 70s. But here, from, say, southern New Jersey uh, down to through southern Pennsylvania, down into Maryland and northeastern Virginia, we have some cloudy <clears throat> cloud issues to deal with and even some scattered showers that <clears throat> are showing up on the radar, although I'm not really overly impressed with them as far as today is concerned. Overall, today, it should be an okay day. Most areas won't have anything worse than partly sunny skies. And then high temperatures for Tuesday as we start to warm up a bit. We'll be back up uh, into the 70s. Again, there will be some cloud issues holding things down. It's Wednesday that's going to be the hot day this week. We're going to see temperatures run up uh, toward the 90-degree uh, mark in some places. Uh, you're going to see... Uh, uh, highs uh, reaching 90 in Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington. It'll probably get to close to 90 in New York City, if not hit 90 itself. Gets a little cooler as you go north and east of there. But this is the one day this week that we're going to see uh, summertime rearing its ugly head, I guess, if you're, a, you're not a fan of uh, hot, humid weather. But then on Monday, uh, I'm sorry, on Thursday, it corrects. We have a cold front that's coming through Wednesday evening. There might be a few showers or storms with that. That front's going to stall <clears throat> to our south and wait for another push. You'll notice that on Thursday, it's still up in the upper 80s from northeastern Virginia into Maryland. But you go from New York City north and east, it's only in the 60s. So there's a frontal boundary in there, and that means some showers and some possible thunderstorms. And then Friday, we're going to cool off everywhere uh, as uh, low pressure moves out to the east and cooler air starts to pull down to the north. You're noticing uh, some leftover 70s, South Jersey, southward, but 60s everywhere else. And then Saturday, uh, nice and cool uh, everywhere. Uh, highs mostly in the 60s and areas in northeastern Pennsylvania on up in the Hudson Valley and into southern New England, probably not getting out of the 50s. I think we may see this a bit cooler uh, in terms of the overall uh, uh, look of the temperatures when we get toward Friday and Saturday, the way things are lining up. So here's how it looks. From the standpoint of what to expect on the weather maps today, uh, you've got this uh, warm front that's going uh, up to the northeast. You have uh, a little bit of shower activity that the GFS is picking up on, and so are some of the other models, but they all disappear by uh, late this afternoon and evening. High pressure moves off the main coast. We'll finally start to see the winds bend around more to the southwest on Tuesday and then to the west on Wednesday. And this is where uh, we get uh, those temperatures up around 90 because of this cold front that is coming through from the north and the westerly winds that are going to be ahead of it. Now, there's another low that's going to be uh, headed out to the northeast, uh, and we're going to have to wait for that to go by on Thursday. And I think this is the one, this low and cold front that moves across the Great Lakes in upstate New York, not only produces a, a bit a, a bit more in the way of widespread shower activity that comes in here during the day. Um, we'll have some actually some scattered showers uh, sa uh, and storms Wednesday night into Thursday morning, and then more later in the day. But it's this low that really brings down the cooler air that's going to set up 
for the end of the week and the weekend. And you'll see it here. I'll bring it up a, a bit better on this particular view. But you're going to have low pressure developing in the Gulf of Maine uh, on Friday. And that's going to start to bring down uh, cool air on northerly winds. Here's your big high coming in from the Great Lakes. And that cool air is going to be with us into Saturday as the high settles right over Long Island Saturday afternoon. So we're looking at uh, nice weather coming in for later for Friday and certainly for the start of the weekend. But uh, with this new pattern that we're getting into, things are going to start moving. And we've got another front that's approaching here for uh, Monday. And so we'll have uh, probably hold on to some sunshine on Sunday. And then we're going to get into some showers here on Monday into Monday night and Tuesday as the next front goes by and there'll be a shot of cooler air behind that and then another front as we at another big high building in uh, later next week so uh, definitely a, a different pattern that is coming into play and it's Hurricane Lorenzo which is now uh, weakened uh, and uh, winds uh, top winds are down to 105 miles an hour so it's a category 2 hurricane but Lorenzo is driving a, a solid pattern change here. Here is what it looks like on the wider view. Uh, the eye uh, is uh, from distinct from the overnight, but we kind of lose it uh, as we uh, move uh, into the day side. But there's still some semblance of, a set of, of an eye there. And uh, the storm is uh, on the large side, continuing to expand. We've got hurricane watches up now for the Azores. And the storm is going to continue tracking northeastward. I, I think it could come very close to Ireland uh, and, uh, and also uh, impact uh, England and Scotland in some way late this week. Uh, the uh, models are, well, the uh, GFS and the European model are picking up on this. So just really quick, uh, we'll um, show you the uh, rain, uh, what the Euro GFS is doing. Uh, interestingly enough, let's uh, let me roll back here. Uh, but there's um, uh, there you can see Lorenzo, and it passes very very close to the uh, Azores, just to the northwest of the Azores, on uh, Tuesday night, and then uh, gets very close to England, Ireland, and Scotland. And and again, yesterday we talked about the fact that does this thing get wrapped up and around uh, the uh, developing big storm that's out uh, south of Greenland, or does it get kicked away separately? Uh, the uh, GFS has now uh, gone uh, along with the idea that the European has, which is to keep it separate. And even the European kind of has it in roughly the same spot, uh, just to the west-northwest of Northern Ireland. And uh, then it kind of gets kicked away. I can't tell from this because I can only see 24-hour uh, printouts, so I don't know what happens in between. Um, it looks like uh, that it just kind of gets wrapped up in the uh, system that's near uh, Greenland, uh, which is a switch of what this model was doing yesterday. So the model seemed to be going back and forth on what's going to happen uh, to Lorenzo. But uh, the things we do know is that at least from the standpoint of uh, getting a close approach to England, Ireland, and Scotland, that looks like it's going to happen regardless. And it also, regardless, we are going to see it impact the uh, overall weather pattern change across the northern hemisphere. It's basically a chain reaction that's getting set off uh, that's going to carry through. Uh, but uh, that's all going to happen late this week. It's got to get up and get into uh, Europe first, and that's going to set off the chain reaction down the road. But we're starting to see the process of all this getting underway. Weather in five was a little bit longer today, and uh, I get that. Uh, remember, uh, folks, uh, you can also watch this on my free weather app, so be sure to download the updated version. And it also is a good safety, care, uh, a little bit of an insurance policy for you. Um, I'm having a little hiccup with Facebook that should be that's going to be resolved today. So uh, if you can't find me there, uh, you've got me on the weather app, and you can uh, have all the latest weather information that way. And the new app updates uh, you will default to your location. You no longer have to put your location in every single time you go on it. It will default to your local, uh, your location on current conditions, on your local forecast, and on the iPhone at least. It even does it with regards to uh, the radar. So just wanted to let you know on that. All right. Have a great uh, rest of your day. 
Uh, appreciate you being here, and uh, we'll see you uh, later. We'll have our regular YouTube live stream tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Time.